you are in Underdog. Yeah. You are one of the three main characters in Underdog. Can you just describe for us the story of Underdog and the character you play in Underdog? Well, uh, the character I play is Dino. Uh, she's a Swedish girl that moves to Norway to work, uh, which is something that's happening right now. And she starts to work in a middle class family and then the, the drama begins. So it's, it's a story about finding yourself. Um, and basically I would say that it's a story about class and gender. Um, and of course like the relationship between employer and employee. So, and then it's just set in Norway, so that's just like a good way to place the story because it's really accurate of what's happening in Scandinavia right now. Mm. Can you just tell us a bit about that particular mm. issue about what the state of play is in Scandinavia as reflected in the film? Yeah. Uh, well, the thing is that uh, Sweden has been like the big brother of Scandinavia for a really long time, uh, basically because they didn't do anything during the World War Two. <laughs> so you know, every every other country in Scandinavia was just shattered on war, but Sweden sort of was neutral. So uh, it went well. Uh, and now everybody else is working up, and Norway found oil, so financially they really rised. So a lot of, and now uh, Sweden has had a really high unemployment rate of, uh, of young people. At one time it was up to 25%. Uh, yeah, so a lot of young people go over to Norway. So when you're in Oslo and when you go to like a real shitty cafe or something like that, the waiter will always be Swedish. <laughs> now you mentioned class before. Yeah. It's very interesting because class has re-emerged as an issue. Yeah. What do you think the film says about the class issue in Scandinavia? Uh, oh, well, I think it says a lot of things. Uh, mostly it talks about a really ignorant middle class, I would say. Uh, I think that's like the blessing of being uh, middle class is that you, you're always at home, right? You, you have uh, your spot in society and you as an individual, you're important, everyone needs you, you have a uh, it's really clear that you're a part of society and so on, you know, to, to see them be like, oh, we should just drink wine and talk about the wine and let's talk about the book that I read, you know, you know that you're important and I think that's, that's actually like the feeling of class, like if, you, if you're working class or below, uh, you know that uh, we have a society that says that uh, we can replace you. So when you're at these dinners, you know that your opinion, it's not worth as much. You don't know anything about the wine and you can't, you're not even, you don't have the, uh, like socially, you can't afford to say, you know what, I, I don't even care about the wine because it's so obvious that you should. And how has the film been received? Really well, really well. I mean, it's a small film. Uh, it had a small budget. Some said that it was a kamikaze uh, project, taking a small Swedish film to one of Europe's most uh, 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 expensive countries. Uh, but we did it. <laughs> and it's been going in uh, all over Europe and got uh, won a bunch of prizes, which um, is, I think it's important for a Swedish film because when it goes abroad, and it goes well, then you get your, the attention at home as well. So yeah, 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 but I, I think that's something, because then it's like, oh, also it's a good film. Because sometimes there can be an attitude uh, uh, among like Swedish film. I remember my dad said like, okay, so we have to go and see this, this Swedish film. Okay, oh boy, let's go. Like it was a mission that he had to do. And then when he started winning prizes, it was like, okay, so it's good. And I was like, dad, yeah, it's good. <laughs> What's the nerve that you think the film has touched in Scandinavia? Well, I think that it's actually when it came out, it was sort of, we noticed that people aren't talking about this, that sweet young Swedes are going to Norway, even if something, it's really something that's happening. And I think the reason why people aren't talking about it is because, um, First of all, it's not comfortable to give away the main seat. And then uh, the, the kids that are going aren't kids to parents that are uh, like based in Stockholm, uh, that have media positions and so on. It's basically um, countryside kids that go. So they're not in the, um, uh, the place to tell that, to tell that story. Uh, and actually, Romy Sandal, the director, he wanted to make a movie about um, the time right now in his hometown and when he went home he noticed that no one was there 
So it was like, okay, if I want to make a movie about the time right now in Sweden, I have to go to Norway to make it, which is quite funny. But it was nice because we noticed that uh, it gave, the movie gave an opportunity for media to talk about this. So like in the news or in the culture news, when they were talking about the movie, they started to talk about this phenomenon as well, which was interesting. Do you know that that was the intention of the film, to get a conversation going? I think uh, Ron is interested in, in society, so I think he's always, uh, he always wants to discuss things. But of course, I mean, this, uh, I think this is more of, a, it's not just a story about Scandinavia and like Sweden and Norway, it's just a place that actually talk about class and gender. Mm. So yeah. it's, it's, it's kind of like uh, taking the big universe, uh, placing it in the whole, in the small universe, and sort of, and then they're re reflecting one another. Certainly the issue of entitlement, yeah. of middle class entitlement, is very topical in Australia. Oh, okay. so, uh, so that issue absolutely plays here very mm. well. Yeah, mm. so as long as you have a uh, pleased middle class, you know, uh, things can run quite smoothly, mm. and, you know, you, you don't have to care about the... Uh, the issues that are quite unpleasant. Mm. Mm. Now you won an award for this movie. Yes, I won two. You won two awards yeah. for this movie. In Lithuania and in France. In so, uh, and this is your first film. Yes. You've done a lot of stuff in the media, but this is mm. your first motion picture. Yeah. How has this changed your profile at home? And tell us a bit about your profile at home, because you are primarily known as a comedian. Yes and you've done a lot of stuff online and on TV. Mm -hmm. Here you are in a dramatic film. Well, uh, of course it, it means a lot, both as an individual and as a professional person to get a prize, because that's sort of like coming home to mom with a good grade. Uh, and it's, of course, also, uh, you know, you have that childish dream, like, oh, what would it feel like when you're watching these galas and so on? So, of course, it was uh, really nice to get them. But, um, and also for the movie, uh, because that's also a thing that, uh, that uh, so that people notice it. But uh, when it comes to, it was actually quite funny when, because uh, Underdog is a drama, and I'm, I'm more known for comedy. But I went to the theater academy, so I've done this like three years full-time study of just like these old texts. I got Strimbari tattooed all over my soul. Uh, <laughs> and I've done those things. Uh, so when I um, graduated and came out, I didn't really know what to do. Uh, so I started do, to do uh, stuff online, which is great because you don't have to ask anyone for permission. Um, and yeah, so, so like doing comedy was, was for me something new. And at the same time, I got the role in Underdog. And of course, it takes some time to do a movie. Uh, and then I did comedy uh, during that time. So when Underdog came out, uh, for the public eye, it was like, what, you're doing drama? But for me, actually, comedy was something, and still is, something new. Mm. Now, the profile of Scandinavian film yeah. in this country is defined essentially by Ingmar Bergman, mm. Dogma, mm. Lars von Trier, mm. Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, and Human Centipede. All right. Is, is, that, is that a fair, are they fair parameters? Are they, do they give us a good idea of what Scandinavian film is? Or is there something lacking in that impression? Uh, um, well, <laughs> Well, uh, I think if you would speak to a Swedish person and they would be like, okay, what's Swedish film? It would definitely be uh, films about uh, an old police that has like no personal life and so on. But I think that's the, those movies that you're talking about are the ones that make it abroad. And of course, like we have the uh, mainstream movies that don't challenge anything and are, are there to uh, be seen when you have a hangover, which is a good thing because you need that as well. And then, of course, we have the smaller ones. Um, so, um, yeah, in, in one way it's true. And, of course, like if you would go to Sweden and just see Swedish movies, there's, there's a lot more. Now, what is it that you would like the festival to do in terms of either correcting an impression that we might have of Scandinavia or informing it? Uh, well, I think it's always important to look of, uh, when, when you do something. I mean, this film festival is 
it's so good. Like when I looked at the program, every time I turned the page, I was like, oh, this movie. Oh. So it's quite ironic that I go to Australia to catch up on my own culture. Uh, so it's a really good and strong program. So I'm really um, uh, I'm happy that Underdog is a part of it. But then when it comes to always when you have the power to do something, I think you should look at representation and one can always be better with that, like to see like, okay, how many male uh, directors, female directors, what stories are we telling, uh, is everyone white and so on. I think that's, that's something that you should always look into. Um, yeah.